Welcome back to the How Soccer Explains Leadership podcast. I'm your host today, Paul Jobson. I'm usually co-hosting with Phil Dark. We are in our off-season talks right now between season three and season four. And I know we've got some amazing, amazing interviews lined up for season four that await us ahead in the future. So we're excited to get to that. Right now, we are in our off-season talks, like I said, and we have a fortunate event today. We are following up in part two of an interview with Marcy Jobson, the wonderful, beautiful Marcy Jobson, about her Warrior Way program. And last episode, last week, we got to talk a lot about Warrior Way, and we talked about there are six pillars. We talked about the first three, so I encourage you to go to the last episode and get up to date with what we're talking about. If you didn't catch that episode, Marcy Jobson is my wife, and if you've heard any of my interviews on How Soccer Explains Leadership, you know I talk a lot about her. She is a former U.S. Women's National Team player that competed in the 2007 World Cup is also a former Division I women's soccer coach and many, many other accolades that go along with her soccer career, both as a player and as a coach. So I think Phil will probably have her on at some point and get a more in-depth interview with her. But Marcy, thanks for joining us again for part two of our Talk About Warrior Way. Thanks for having me, Paul. <laughs> you bet. Guys, we're actually in like two separate rooms of our house right now. I'm in like the Paul Jobson studio, man cave, second office. Marcy is in our fireplace family room across the house from each other. So you may I hear kids in the background. In the closet somewhere. Just somewhere, They're somewhere. In the closet. Yeah, don't scare everybody, Marcy. Don't scare everybody. <laughs> but but no, a cool thing, Phil asked us to talk about this. And, and you know, we're really passionate about this Warrior Way program and, and just what you've created and what God's kind of put on your heart to create this program has been really amazing to, to partner with you side by side on this. But people can get this from the last episode. They can get a real in-depth you know idea of what Warrior Way is. But for those who haven't heard it and didn't pause and go back and listen, give us a kind of an overview again of what the Warrior Way program really is all about. Yeah, in a nutshell, Warrior Way is a way to teach kids to do sport differently it's it's to teach them to uh live courageously and to think differently about the trials and triumphs that are in their sport really essentially we want to teach kids how to merge their faith into their sport we want to teach them how to renew their mind using god's word as kind of that compass and that 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 way to do that and we want to start this young we want to start with kids that are two and three years old and we want to train them up teaching them basic soccer skills, basic Bible truths, and we want to grow that as, as they grow. Awesome. And there's, you want to get more on that. Obviously, today we're going to hit on the last three of the six pillars, but real quick, give us a review also what the six pillars are in their fullness, and we'll dive into the last three in a minute. Yeah, so last week we talked about worship, using your body really as a, as a way to worship in your sport. As I also talked about that being a a big way that I became a Christian. Work, how we do our job for the Lord and not for man. And who are we actually playing for? Who's actually the the king of the kingdom that we are serving in our sport? And then the the third pillar being serve. How can we play a role within our team, whether it's as a starter or sub? And how can we do that in a way that brings light to Christ? How can we be a light? in the way that we serve within our team. So the next pillar that we're really going to be focusing in on here is skill. So the next three are going to be skill, mental toughness, and body readiness. And you want to get more detail on worship, work, and serve. We covered that in in the last episode really, really well. And we'll combine these two together here, finish up with these final three. So Mars, let's jump into into skill. Obviously, when, when you're performing a, any type of sport or you're uh, doing anything skill is is really really in any sport that you're kind of a part of and i think especially as as soccer coaches i think sometimes skill can be overdone at times uh, we'll get into that conversation maybe on another podcast but what does skill mean when it comes to you know serving christ through your sport and in the, in the warrior way program why is that pillar so important well first of all i mean you these these kids are soccer players they have to learn the skills to help them able to play the sport right so I also have learned through watching kids throughout my life, as well as older players, as well as myself, we want to work on only what we're good at. And, and I, and I am a big believer that there is something in every player that can get you on the field. For me, I was in the top, maybe 1% of the world in my ability in the air game. I was, I was very good in the air. 
And that really got me to the next level. That got me to help get me to the, the World Cup team because I was very specified in that skill set. And I worked on that a ton. I worked on that skill set a ton. But then also, we all have some big weaknesses that can keep us off the field. I mean, I know I coached where I'd have an exceptional player. They could not mark on set pieces. And every time they'd be in a set piece, they'd give up a goal. Their man would score. And that would take that player off the field. So really, you want to get so good at a couple things that it puts you on the field. And you want your weaknesses to be good enough that they don't take you off the field. So that's really my, my believer with skill is that we have, to, we have to continue to train our soccer skills because we are soccer players. And we have to train the things we're really good at, but we also cannot neglect the things that we are weak at. Yeah, I love how that, you, everybody will see how these all kind of really interweave together and how that really, you know, being good at your skill and, and honing in on those things, like you said, like, be great at the things you're great at, continue to hone that, but make your weaknesses better as well. And, you know, as you're, as you're playing a sport and how that weaves into, you know, how you serve your team. You're not serving your team well if you're not training well, right? If you're not working on your skill, right? right? You're not, right. and that leads to work. You know, working on your skill is work. And, and all of that and how you do things leads back to worship and how you worship, do all things. Worship, yeah. It's, it's, again, going back to skill is there's so many times I watch people train their skill set. And they do them just halfway. They're very lukewarm and very vanilla in the way that they train. And it's very, that you know, like very, very methodical. And I just don't think that that's going to improve your skill set. So like you need to train the way that you want to play in a game. So again, not everything's got to be hard and tough and mean and ferocious. But when you're training your skills, Sometimes you've got to just really focus in. You got to be mentally sharp. You've got to you've got to really pay attention to the the little ways that you're striking through a ball and how you're doing that. How you're making a run down the field to serve the perfect cross across the box. So it's really paying attention and and being meticulous about how we're actually training these skill sets. It's awesome. We we'll move from skill into the 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 fifth of the sixth, the, the second one today. And I think this is one that, I mean, you, you let out all of these things, obviously, but mental toughness. I think this is something in, in any time yeah. you've worked with any, any of our teams or kids or whatever, this is something that I think as a coach, as I observe players collegiately around the country, I think this is something that is missed out a lot. So talk to us about mental toughness, what, what it means in the pillars for Warrior Way, but what it has meant to you through your career, not only as a player, but, but as a coach. Yeah, I mean, this is probably one of my favorite pillars, but I also grew up in a, like I said, a family of eight kids, and my dad pushed us hard, and if we, you know, I, re, I still remember a scar I have on my eye where I subbed out. My dad was a doctor. He sewed it up, and he's like, get back in there, and and I don't think that that's, that's truly all mental toughness. I'm actually extremely fearful of a person. I think you know that about me, Paul, is that that fear and anxiety can overtake me very quickly and even as a player I would the, the way that I be, began to really see a personal relationship with Jesus is because I knew that I was actually a coward in a lot of ways and I was fearful and I didn't want to fail but the ability to invite Christ into that moment and say Lord I'm scared Jesus I'm scared I need your help and then to, to remember, oh, yeah, but the Bible says he is enough for me. His power is perfect where I am weak. And I'm, I'll boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses because the power of Christ then rests within me. It, it started to, to, I saw that transformation from an individual being myself who is timid, afraid, and anxious. But the invitation to plug into Christ's power and to let him take my soccer and to let him do it with me really transformed me into, I believe, a player that could do hard things, that had the mental toughness to overcome some really terrible injuries, to overcome sitting in the bench, to overcome just different ups and downs in my career. And that was not because of me and, and some great quality that I have. That was purely because I was able to learn that how to make Jesus a huge part of my sport 
and and more than just a prayer, more than just a verse that I write on my hands, but that his spirit was alive and well inside of me and he could make me a mental warrior. He could help me be an individual that could handle a lot of different things in my sport. What I don't want people to miss here is that there's a huge misconception that you're either you're born mentally tough or you're not. Like you're either wired that way or you're not. What I want, don't want people to miss here is that the point that you made a minute ago that you know, probably most of your teammates and definitely the players that you coached, uh, unless until you had that pregame talk where you would talk about it, didn't know those things about you, that you were yeah. you had fear, that you had to work through fear, that it wasn't really who you who you were, but through the power of Christ, you became yeah. that. And I think that's, I don't want that to be missed because I just think there's so many people that think that you either are or you aren't. And right. But what you're teaching us through this pillar of mental toughness is that by tapping into what you, you talked a lot about through the worship pillar of, you know, the, that, that power source of the Holy Spirit, you're able yeah. to, to be greater than you could do on your own. And that's, yeah. that's how that mental toughness has kind of developed. Is that somewhat yeah. accurate there? Oh, absolutely. And I, I just think this, this is, yeah, it's hard to admit on a podcast that you are a fearful person, but I think, you know, that is true of me, but there's been, this is sport has been, that's why I'm so passionate about sport because it has revealed to me the truth of who Jesus is and who he wants to be for me in my life. Because now I take the same quality into my parenting of four boys and into hard things that we face in real in real life you know outside of soccer you know and so i just i just feel really blessed to have played that many years to really learn this skill set of what i call inviting jesus in knowing his word to be able to kind of repeat it back to yourself and claim that truth and then to be able to rest in the promises that he gives us it is a spiritual discipline, I think, to become mentally tough on the soccer field. Yeah, that's, I think, you know, we, we talk about how the worship piece is kind of the culmination of everything. It all kind of comes back to, you know, how we do what we do and we worship God in all that we do. And I think, but I do think kind of what you said that while the mental toughness piece is kind of your favorite pillar here. I do think it's a, a prominent pillar in how you're able to do all these other things. So again, just to connect the dots all back again, that mental toughness piece again is is extremely strong pillar in, in how this all is put together. Another one, which is our, our final of the of the six, is make your body ready or body readiness. Right. What that that one, all the other ones, the words really make a lot of sense, right? But this one might need a little bit more explaining for, for our listeners. But take us through right. take us through this pillar. Yeah, I just think as athletes, we cannot neglect some key things that are going to help us to perform the best that we can. And those things are nutrition. I mean, what we put into our temple, hydration, kind of the, how we how we continue to hydrate and fuel ourselves, sleep, you know, how, how we make sure we're getting enough rest, everything from fitness, strength and conditioning, all the things that take our earthly temporal body and make it as, as, as good as we can to be able to go onto the soccer field and as prepared as we can to be able to play our very best. So fueling our temple the right way, putting the right things into our bodies. I think all those things are, are so important. So, and there's things that we sometimes, you know, we sometimes neglect or whine about. I, I see it all the time in fitness, you know, again, I, this is something God had to teach me is, is when I was in the youth national team program, I was not very fit. And I remember one, one youth team actually saying, hey, you're a really good player. You're just not fit enough. And I was like, this is something I can actually control is how hard I go out and work on my fitness. And how I, and a lot of players will say, oh, well, that fitness test isn't really good for, like, pro, like good for my body or that doesn't really meet my body's best attributes or whatever but i think it's, it's learning to say like hey again when we invite jesus in as worship we don't know what we're capable of we we could do so many things immeasurably more than what we ever thought we could do and i've seen it in my life i've seen it in my players that have coached their life i've seen god take a, a average group of girls in 2012 and do something so special on this this unique college team to create create a group of, of spiritual warriors that could 
beat up on teams and play amazing. So that's what I really think is making your body as ready as you can so that you can perform the way that you want to play. Yeah, so to, just to kind of recap the, the six, you know, we started with the first three in, the, in the, the last episode of worship, work, and serve, and kind of wrapped up these last three with skill, mental toughness, and, and body readiness. And I think one of the things I've, I've tried to, to do through this is try to connect the dots how, while, while structurally we call them pillars, they do overlap a lot. And without, without each pillar, the house falls. Talk a little bit about, about that as we kind of visually kind of put it together the pillars, what are we What are we building here? Yeah, I mean, I think you're trying to build a complete player. We all know in leadership, if you are a super skilled player, but you don't work hard, that's, you know, that's not leader. If you work extremely hard, but you cannot trap the ball, that's not gonna be beneficial to a team. If you're a superstar that never will serve your team in any way, shape or form, nobody wants to follow you. So I think it's, it's again, trying to take these different things and saying they all are very important to become the best soccer player you can be. But then also, if you want to be uh, an athlete that, that wears that badge of, I'm a player that plays for Jesus, what does that really look like? It's more than just, you know, being nice and doing nice things. It's the ability to overcome adversity, to be courageous when you play. It's the ability to think under pressure to think when you're when you're afraid and, and to think courageously. And what do I mean by think courageously? Because again, when people say you have to be confident, I don't know many days of my life when I'm confident, but I don't need to be confident because I have God's word that I can store inside of me. And that can transform me into a confident person and a confident athlete. So it's really kind of teaching all those pieces that come together to create the complete player. Yeah, folks, don't miss that. It's not about being confident, it's about being competent. And I think if you if you catch another great piece of this is that you know, you've got a former player who played at the, the highest level uh, in the game telling you that she didn't know many days where she was confident. This is someone who's been to a World Cup, who has played for national championships, who has won state championships in high school. I mean, let's not forget that. I know that's your glorious glory of all is your state championship in high school. That's no joke, people. I'm sure. School. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure we'll get to that in Phil's podcast uh, down the road. But these are just some, some amazing things. And I think one thing, Marcy, that makes your your platform so strong is that people that know you know that as you're describing these six pillars, people that know you are going, man, that's, that's Marcy. That's Marcy. That's Marcy. You really live out these six pillars, which I would think, I mean, as you were describing how this kind of all came about, it is about your, your journey from, from who you were to who you are through Christ now. Is that would you go along with that? Yeah, yeah, and I, I think it's just not to miss that. It is. It has been a process for me, and people that know me the best through my life that were teammates of mine and roommates of mine know that, like, they're, they're definitely, as a player, there were some really hard moments where I failed miserably, where I was not the teammate I needed to be, where I was kind of just, lingering in my depression about an injury or upset because I didn't get to play and sat the bench once again or was the superstar that kind of didn't notice those around me but God taught me so much through those moments he taught me how to do those things the the correct way he gave me second chances to be able to maybe do it a different way and so I really um you look back at things that happened to you and, and, and at the time you can't see it, but I look back now and I'm thankful for a lot of that adversity because I really believe it's helped me shape now what I would call the warrior way. That's awesome. I think that's a great place to, to kind of wrap up, wrap up here. And if you guys listening would like more information about uh, warrior way, you can go to jobsonsoccer.com or you could email Marcy at Marcy at jobsonsoccer.com for more information about how soccer explains leadership here. Obviously, you have found the podcast a website with the same name. You can join our Facebook group and join in the conversation there as well. And we appreciate uh, your time today. I know this is this is always beneficial for me. I mean, this is my wife, and it doesn't matter how many times we talk. I'm always inspired, and I always learn something 
uh, from her. And I know Phil is chomping at the bit to get her on a full episode here in the near future. And as we ramp up for season four, uh, you are going to be amazed and blessed by the content that's coming uh, here in the near future. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for your downloads. And uh, we hope that you will join us next time on How Soccer Explains Leadership. And hopefully today you're really seeing how soccer really does explain life and leadership.